What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue, and today we'll be learning the exact fall distance an outlaw needs to hit literal terminal velocity. <laughs> oh, and Shadowlands, yeah, that too. That's right, Shiba Squad. YouTuber privilege is totally 100% confirmed because even at 1,000 charming subscribers, the okayest rogue in North America has stealthed his way into the Shadowlands beta. And no, I'm actually joking. My YouTube account isn't even connected to the same email as my Battle.net, so I really doubt they went out of their way and I anticipate this just being a sign of good fortune as this will help the channel so much. But before the rest of the video rolls through, I just want to let you folks know I will still be covering live content too, as I know a few of you specifically mentioned you weren't too keen on information about the beta. So I'll be doing two videos of each type of content, and I'll be sure to let you all know what I think my release schedule is going to be like once I uh, figure out what days I'll be doing live stuff and what days I'll be doing beta stuff. I might end up streaming on a day in between or just including a fifth video of one type of content or the other, depending if there's anything in particular you guys want a video about. There is quite a bit of catching up I have to do on beta now in terms of leveling and all the content that just came out with beta, so I have a lot of information to go through right now, which is why I'm here to talk about this with you guys today. I have some cool videos already thought up, but if there's anything in particular you want covered, let me know in the comments to this video. And I mean that for retail and beta, as any suggestions help me see what you folks are more interested in, because as you've probably seen from a lot of my content, I do try to cover a lot of topics in the game to see what's most interesting to you guys. Anyways, I just wanted to touch base with all you before I showcased a little teaser of the Covenant system currently in beta testing. So if you don't want to watch any of that, then don't worry, I'm not going to go just making it all 100% Shadowlands content. So I just wanted to say thank you for checking out the channel, watching the videos, and being a subscriber. As you probably saw, if it worked correctly at least, the channel is now officially monetized, which uh, took way, way less time than I assumed it would. When they have you apply for monetization and all that mumbo jumbo, they say it usually takes almost a month for them to like review your channel to confirm or deny it, but uh, I did that at like 2 in the morning after I finished yesterday's video and it was approved before I even woke up. So I guess they just saw sheep as everyone said, oh yeah, absolutely, this is the best channel ever, they're so charmed, there can't be a bad thing there. At least that's what I hope they said. Oh, and this is your last chance if you don't want to see any of that beta stuff because I'll be talking about all four of the Covenants and abilities right now. I'll be looking at all of these and examples for what an outlaw rogue can expect for abilities and cool features, though I'll also touch up on assassination and subtlety too, though I still need more time to test them all in combat. I really don't want to spoil too much of the zones unless you guys really want to see everything. If so, let me know in the comments. The Covenant Decision Quest also lets you see the Covenant armor for your armor type, as well as the mount you can earn from working with your Covenant. So, if you're primarily interested in aesthetics, then this is a nice way to understand what you're in for. I'll start with the Necrolords, whom are the military powerhouses of the Shadowlands. They are located in Maldraxxus, which is probably the coolest sounding name for a zone I've heard in a long time. Basically, think like that Scourgeholm section in Ice Crown, but on steroids, and that's what their zone looks like. The Necrolords will give everyone the Covenant ability Fleshcraft, and Rogues will get the ability Serrated Bone Spike. Fleshcraft is basically an Absorb Shield that is improved by teabagging your enemies when you use it. No, really. The Absorb Shield is a bare minimum of 20% of your maximum health, and if you use it near badass enemies, it can go as high as 50%. So griefing is totally what the Necrolords are about, and I respect that. This is honestly a pretty solid ability, but it's improved immensely by Soulbinds, which I'll uh, have to cover in an upcoming episode, because that makes this whole topic way more complicated. Our class-specific ability, Serrated Bone Spike, is honestly absurdly good from what I can tell. Basically, it costs nearly no energy, and allows you to chuck a spike at your target from up to 30 yards away. This spike will then make your target take bleeding damage every 3 seconds, until they die. Yes, really, until they die. So Outlaw finally gets a damage over time ability, which is amazing. But what's better is the fact you gain combo points for how many active spikes are out on targets when you use this. So for instance, if you hit a target and no bone spike debuffs are out, you gain one combo point. But if you hit the same target again, you'd gain two combo points over and over for basically free because it's literally only 10 energy to throw a bone spike. What's even better though, is if you have multiple targets with bone spike up, you can get tons of free combo points, which means we can spend more combo points for more cooldown recovery on all of our moves. 
It also has three charges, has a 30 second recharge rate, oh, and if any target dies with the spikes on them, or gets healed to full health, you get a charge of bone spike back again. So yeah, I love this ability, and I'm most likely going to be going Necrolords if this ability stays as strong as it is. Up next we have the Venthyr, the vampire-esque aristocratic denizens of the Shadowlands. Their zone is Revendreth, and it looks like something out of Van Helsing, and my goodness, it has to be my favorite zone visually of the bunch. I always love that dark, gothic architecture, and this fits the bill perfectly for me. Their covenant ability is Door of Shadows, and the rogue-specific ability is Slaughter. Door of Shadows is basically a 35-yard blink that you have to cast. It takes one and a half seconds to do so, and is on a one-minute cooldown. For rogues, I don't see this as being the most amazing thing ever, because you know, stealth, shadow step, grappling hook, sprint, etc. The slaughter ability costs 50 energy to cast, and does a pretty average amount of damage. To put it in perspective, the 1083 damage it does is basically the equivalent of a sinister strike proccing a second hit, but it also deals damage over time, and has a health leeching effect, which would probably make this a pretty decent PvP ability. Again, having damage over time effects as Outlaw means losing less uptime and damage, so it's something, but I can't say exactly how strong the dot is yet, as I don't think there are any add-ons up and running, so I don't really know how much damage it really does. And now we have the Kyrian of Bastion, whom are basically considered the most noble, chivalrous, and pure of the Four Covenants. Bastion's a very idyllic zone, which draws a lot of parallels to a mixture of like Talador and Negron to me at least. Their Covenant ability is Summon Steward, which is a 5 minute cooldown ability that gives you access to a potion that heals you for 15% of your max health, and removes all curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects. So, kinda just a worse dwarf racial on an even longer cooldown, so I don't know about this one guys. It's never a bad thing to be able to remove bad effects, especially if you're a class that can't, but this becomes a lot less useful, especially if you're a dwarf. Your steward also gives you access to a couple abilities like vendoring gear, changing your talents, and giving your best friend a high five or something. I, it, it puts a debuff on people, but I don't really know what it does if it does anything. And it looks like you can only use those abilities once per day. So, yeah, I guess that's cool. The class specific ability is Echoing Reprimand, which is a 3 combo point generating move on a 45 second cooldown. The damage is pretty minimal, doing only slightly more than a single Sinister Strike that didn't even proc, but the unique part is the Anima Charge effect. This move Anima Charges a combo point, which means whatever finishing move uses the same amount of combo points as the Anima Charged one will basically act as though you used 7 combo points. This honestly doesn't sound terribly great to me since Outlaw's combo point generation can be extremely inconsistent due to Sinister Strike procs, so it's entirely possible that you won't be able to get the exact amount of combo points you need very easily. Honestly, Assassination suffers from the same issue too. So I'm not too keen on the Kyrian in terms of their effects, though their armor and mount look cool and their zone's very pretty, so I guess that's something. Lastly is the Night Fae, whom reside in Ardenweald, which is a mystical forest where souls are prepared for rebirth. While not quite my style, this area definitely has a very magical ambiance to it that I'm sure will be very popular to quite a lot of players. Their covenant ability is Soul Shape, which turns you into a Vulpin, aka a really cool looking spirit fox thing. This is on a one and a half minute cooldown and allows you to teleport up to 10 yards forward every four seconds and the form lasts for 12 seconds. You also get a movement speed increase while you're in Vulpin form. Unless you're in a rested area, and then you can run around as a spirit fox and blink around to your heart's content. This is again something that really doesn't benefit any rogue spec at all that much, since we're already exceptionally mobile, but it is really cool looking. The class specific ability is Sepsis, a damage over time effect on a one and a half minute cooldown. If Sepsis lasts for its entire duration, then you will trigger a free vanish. Now, for Outlaw Rogues, this is really only something that'd probably be useful in PvP, maybe. But for Assassination or Subtlety, this sounds fantastic. Free Vanishes, meaning talents like Sutterfuge, Master Assassin, and Nightwalker are going to be so powerful. So I can see this Covenant being a very popular choice for raiding especially. Unfortunately, that means I really, really hope Outlaw's raiding potential is pretty strong. 
as having to choose between covenants just because your spec uses X covenant for raiding or X covenant for mythic plus or whatever is not something I really wanted to see when it came to covenant choices. This is of course all still beta, which literally only just started, so it's all still up in the air. Regardless, I can't wait to make more of this content for you guys. What sounds like the best covenant to you? I'm pretty sold on Necrolords at the moment, unless I swapped specs entirely, but I highly doubt that would ever happen. The free vanishes though, wow. That is gonna be massive for subtlety and assassination. If you ended up liking this video, you should stick around, as I plan to cover quite a bit more of beta as well as plenty of other WoW stuff in retail. If you really liked it, you should consider joining the Shiba Squad today, so you'll always know exactly when my new content comes up. I do put out videos every weekday, so I'll have plenty of new stuff for you. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.